Welcome to Rough and Rowdy. Special announcement coming in hot. Added to Rough and Rowdy 19, December 9th. I put together one hell of a crew for the Calabas Fight Companion Show. We will be watching it live with the boys. It's over. He's dancing on the This is the craziest yeah. environment we've yeah. ever had for one of these. Oh, another big one! Oh. What else you want? Tune in. Quick rampage, Jackson! Donald Cowboy Cerrone! You're born! We flew him all the way from New Jersey to Calabasas, California. He is a living legend. The former 155 world champion of the UFC. On today's food truck, it's Frankie Edgar, my first guest ever. And I'm feeding him barbecue. This is Tank. Let's go. Make it big, big, super thick. From my wallet to my check. I don't want it if it's skinny, but I need it if it's thick. Need a thick girl for the thick boy. I need everything I get, super thick. Used to have a model bitch, now I got a big one. Yeah, I do. Last night went late, yeah, we had a sick one. Yeah, very drunk. Yeah, and I like the legend himself, B Shop, Mr. Up, Frankie man? Edgar. What's going on, brother? No, man, out here in Calabasas with you. Yeah, the weather's better in Jersey. Better in Jersey. For here, it's awful. Yeah. For Jersey, well, it's I'll a summer it, day. I'll take but it. No jacket on, I'm good. I know you look good, brother. Uh -huh. Look good for a retired man. Retired, man. You look gotta, happy. I am happy, man. I, I can't complain. Yeah. You know? Life's I mean, been good. Legend status. Yeah. Gonna get that first ballot Hall of Famer. We'll see. I mean, that's not up to me, but yeah. Oh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I guarantee yeah. it. Yeah, 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 guarantee it. Yeah, yeah. you, Tom Brady. Yeah. If I have to bet on people getting the Hall of Fame, it's you and Tom Brady. <laughs> I, I like that. I'm down yeah. with it. Now, I'm not betting on James Krause, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Betting in James Krause. Yeah, I think yeah. We gotta, can't yeah you got good odds. You feel me? No, uh, yeah, man. I mean, think about it. When you first started, what, damn near, you started in 2005, what, 17 years ago? 17 years ago. 17 years, bro. Yeah, yeah. 17 years in the UFC. Well, f f 16 in the UFC. 16, yeah. yeah so yeah, you had yeah, five, yeah. what, yeah. five fights outside of the yep, UFC? Yeah. But by the time you get, so, you know, yeah. 15 years in the UFC, do you ever think, you know, you'd be no, doing it that never. long? I mean, honestly, when I got, I remember being in college, uh, my, 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 coach was 30 years old he just got done he's like 32 just got done competing i remember saying oh i'd love to be able to compete when i'm 30. yeah and here i am 41 so you know still competing dude. so it was, it was cool it was a great career man you know i'm happy about oh, it. oh great i mean that's the hundred i mean if someone would uh read through the names that you've beaten uh, when you were you know just around ufc be like get the hell out of here yeah it's that, it's the who's who i mean for sure the best of the best bro yeah i always wanted to Look, I always want, you know, when I got into this, I wanted to say when I'm done with my fight career, I look back and I just fought everybody. And, and it was good that I fought, you know, everybody across three weight classes. You yeah. Know what I, mean? I mean, and literally the, the former champs, current champs, you're a champ. It's just like, I mean, a straight up Hall of Famer career. For I mean, sure. think about it. You, you beat Charles Oliveira. I bet you didn't think he was going to become champion, especially yeah. if I'm back then. Uh, yeah, I mean, I knew he was, you know, he was he was young as hell too. So uh, See, you know, he had a lot of potential. I yeah. remember Chael saying, "You're you're going to appreciate this win a lot more in the future." And yeah, Chael said yeah, that. Yeah. God bless yeah, him. Yeah, because right. I, I was never that. You no, know, we're going around on Charles Oliveira, but I was never that high on him. I knew he had talent, but early in his career, you could you saw some quit in him. Yeah. Absolutely. So when he started, you know, ripping off some wins, I was like, yeah. But when the going gets tough, then even after he proved himself, I was like, yeah. But that's in there, right. and then it's not yeah. like the Chandler yeah. fight. He could have easily taken it. He could have because he was getting whooped at, at first. Yeah, dude, yeah. he's a straight savage. So, um, I mean, retired UFC legend, and it's kind of like now for you, it's like to me, it's like. Now, granted, you're the outlier, you know, it's been basically 15 years in the UFC, which is an eternity, but still only 15 years of, you know, you look, it's just a chapter of the book, the Frank. Right, yeah, right. That's just a chapter of the Answers book. Absolutely. So it's like, now what? Like, now to me, like, your life is starting, if that makes sense. Yeah, you no. Because know, you had such a regiment, like a strict schedule, you know, all right, I fought, I'll probably fight three times a year, maybe twice if I'm champ. Like, you have an idea how your year's going to pan out. Right. Now it's like you're in this... Yeah, it's a clean no slate. Land. Clean yeah. slate. It's exciting, you know. Uh, 
new goals, new things to chase, you know, and uh, a lot of time to do it. So yeah. I'm excited to, to see what's next. I still have some things I want to figure out. You know, I don't really have a, I'm not really set on what it's going to be next, yeah. but I have a lot of, lot of uh, irons in the fire, I guess you could say. You've always been one of those guys, like, since I've, I've known you for a hot second, you've always had, like, a lot of irons in the fire. You Like, obviously, you were taking care of business inside the Octagon, but you've always kind of hustling on the side, yeah. like doing your thing, like you're a business-minded guy, so. You gotta be, you gotta be, you know, you can, and I always knew, you know, this was gonna end eventually. Yeah. So I always tried to, to see what's next, and uh, yeah, it's exciting that now I have to f all that focus for that. I never really moved on too much. Like, I always had irons in the fire, but I would want to focus on my no, fight No, that's why, so like, much. you were always, yeah. especially, yeah, you were always two feet in, but you were, like, when there was time, you, you did have other kind of things going on, but it didn't take away your focus, right, if that right. makes sense. Exactly. No, exactly, yeah. exactly. So now I can put 100% into what's next now. Yeah, and I think that makes it easier for a guy like you. I mean, doing 15 years, it's like, the scary thing is when guys are forced to stop, mm. and they have to stop, and then there's, there's like, they're like, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Right, right. I think everyone deals with it. Like, obviously, professional athletes are notoriously known. And really, you know, even the military, you know, they serve their four years. They have a special set of skills. They're in a strict regiment. And then after four years, you know, if they do decide to stop doing the military, it's like, we're good. Yeah, right. Like, literally, the government, the we're America's good, like, we're good. It, yeah. Thank you. And they're like, right. whoa. <laughs> What's next? I have this special set of skills, man. And I'm not fitting into this nine to five world. Like, what am I supposed to do? So I think no matter, you know, everyone suffers a little bit from that kind of, even college kids, when you get done, you have a degree. Right. And you think it's going to turn out to this big thing. It really doesn't work like that. No. So, again, you're in college, four years, military, four years, UFC average career it used to be a year and a half i think wow. it's a little longer wow. now wow. No. um but you know you're so focused on that you have a special set of skills and then you get done it's like what the what's hell? next yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. scary yeah it, i mean so it, scary it's scary and exciting you know i mean yeah. I, a type of person i am i know uh i'm not gonna just rest on my laurels you know what i mean i'm gonna go attack something so you're the least person i'm worried about yeah, and yeah, I, we yeah. have a ton of guys on the show and some with you know we're back cut and I'm like so what are you what are you thinking man? yeah, like, yeah. Should i start doing stand-up or i'm like i don't know dude you know it's like yeah ufc it, gym coach yeah, you know yeah, it's yeah, like right right Not holding mitts at the ufc gym know, making seven dollars an hour it's like yeah. it's fucking tough dude. it is tough but for you i've never been worried dude never yeah never, no, never. I'm, I'm uh like i said i'm excited for what's next and uh yeah you know i'm i'm fucking podcasting like you now i did a little bit of stand-up not quite as good as you guys but, oh man uh, it was fun i yeah. mean dude it was good yeah it was, yeah, funny. No, it, it, was it was a good time i had a blast doing it i, I acted in a movie this year oh did, did yeah. you like that it was it was cool it was, you know small budget film still uh, but acting uh, it's it different was awesome, right man you know i had some good actors that were on set with me really yeah um, isn't it amazing to see it, like it a was, real like when you see real actors you get such an appreciation well, for it, it it was yeah i jumped in and dude i've never done it i mean i did kickboxer movie i played joe rogan you know what i mean i played, oh, okay. I played myself you know but, yeah you know how to do yeah, that right like, that's not really acting yeah, right yeah. yeah but uh for this i mean yeah it, it, i was jumping in some scenes and it felt comfortable because these guys were all about it it wasn't like awkward you know what yeah. I mean? they were all into you weren't it. like embarrassed yeah like, no. oh, i'm like all right up. yeah this is, yeah. This is what we're supposed to do so it, it was fun, fun acting's experience. work is completely what you know what we're used to especially with the ufc where you're like in charge you take control and you can kind of delegate your day and it's like to me I've done a few acting gigs. It's like the hurry up and wait. Yeah, which right, I was right. like, let's go yeah, here, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's sure. like one scene for that entire day. Yeah, oh, it's wild. And, and you got to do it every camera oh angle and every yeah, cut. It's, it's not, we do it. I'm like, realized. we just blew up a car. <laughs> There's things here, here. And they're like, yeah, we got to clean all that up. Go to your trailer. You're like, that's gonna take like four hours, yeah, dumbass. Yeah, like, it, it is uh, no doubt. Wait. I'll just go back and then the scene where I have no speaking lines. I sit in the back. I'll wait four hours and do that. Right, right. But yeah. then. When you re when you see like the actual actors, like I was, I did a movie with Shia LaBeouf. I was oh, on yeah, set with him yeah. for two weeks. Oh, wow, that took a while. Now, one of the worst movies you've ever seen. But <laughs> still, just to see the talent of Shia LaBeouf, I was blown away, yeah, dude. Yeah, blown away. It would I be bet. like seeing you for the first time in the Octagon, or like a John Jones, or you know, if you see LeBron in person. Yeah. Like I was like jaw open, like watching him act. I was like, this is mind high blowing. Level, high level. How yeah, talented yeah. he is, dude. Yeah. Nuts. He's a crazy artist, right? A little bit. Oh, bro, <laughs> the the stories I have for you. I, we, when we sit down, maybe when I get some food, I feel like yeah, yeah. It, I nuts. Nuts. Yeah, no, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I think he's chilled out as a kid now, but I nuts, dude. Wild and man. Brian Ortega was on set with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was like down to fight both of us. And I was yeah? like, do you, do you realize yeah? what's happening oh, here? This isn't we Transformers, set that up. We set bitch. That up, you know? Yeah, I will. We'll <laughs> yeah. kick you in eternity, bro. <laughs> yeah. But he was a really cool guy. Um, <laughs> no, he was actually really cool. I actually, yeah, I have so much respect for him. He's so talented. Do you, do you, 
do you want to get into more acting, you think? I would do it, you know. I don't think I'd want it to be my main thing. But if, like, you know, something comes up here and there, I, I would jump on it. Yeah, it's a weird route, right? Like, I don't know if I could be that, like, the whole gym. Hollywood style. Like, if I, you know, stay in Jersey and do it, I I'm down. Yeah, if, like, Marvel came to you to play, like, Ant-Man or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, not saying to you. I'm not dogging your yeah, size. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah, Ant-Man yeah. would be dope. <laughs> but if, like, Ant-Man, you could yeah. just fly here and be like, Ant-Man yeah, and that, shit, that you know? That would be pretty dope. I'd yeah. Do that. yeah but, and you do the podcast, and uh, what, what's it called? The uh, Champ and the Tramp. Sh yeah, Champ and the Tramp. And you've been doing that how long? Almost three years now. Three years? Yeah, yeah. And you like it? It's fun, man. It's definitely fun. I, I, I Roger Matthews, my co-host, he's a good friend of mine. He yeah. lives in my town. I do it in my basement. You know, we kick it. We have some good guests on. If not, it's just me and him. Uh, and you uh, guys would know him from uh, Jersey Shore. He was Wow's boyfriend on the show. Yep. Eventually, they got married. And then they have two kiddos together? Two kids. Two divorced kids. Re now. Recently got divorced, yeah. I guess, you know, three years ago or something like that. Yeah. And he was on the show at like the high yeah, of yeah, Jersey Shore. Yeah, I mean, that show yeah. was nuts. It was it was bananas, man. Growing, yeah, I live right over the bridge from where that that uh, that was filmed. So That's right. It was nuts in the summer when they were on. Let's take a little break from me chatting Frankie Edgar's ear off on this episode of Food Truck Diaries, because I'll tell you right now, I'm always concerned about this online world we are living in, and people can steal your identity. And anything you do, people are ordering so much stuff, gifts for the holidays, your banking, your bills, everything is done online. You're putting all this private information on there, and there are people out there that will get that information. You need to be protected, and you got to use the protection from my friends at Allstate Identity Protection, the best identity protection from a brand you can trust. You've heard of Allstate. Come on. So much of life's life is logging into our digital lives. That's why Allstate developed an identity protection product that protects your digital life just like they protect your physical life. You have insurance for your regular life, so why won't you do it for your digital life? Think how much time you spend on a computer, on your phone. And with Allstate Identity Protection, they'll reimburse you up to a million bucks for out-of-pocket expenses, lost wages, legal fees. They'll also cover money stolen from your bank accounts, 401ks, HSAs, and tax returns at Allstate. They have been protecting the things people love for over 90 freaking years. All right? Think the identity protection your bank provides is enough? Do you? Think again. The reality is that most financial institutions act only after fraud occurs rather than preventing it. Why, why even let it get started? Stop it from the very start, all right? Having comprehensive monitoring and coverage from AIP will help stop identity thieves in their tracks before any major damage is done. What I love about Allstate Identity Protection is it covers the whole squad, my whole family, my girl, my in-law, my, my brother. Everybody's protected. It gives me a peace of mind because we live in this digital world and there's all sorts of information out there, right? So when you think identity protection, think Allstate Identity Protection. To find out if your employer offers Allstate Identity Protection, head to AIP.com slash shop, S-C-H-A-B. If not, get a 30-day free trial at AIP.com slash shop. One last time, that's AIP.com slash shop. This episode of Food Truck Diaries, Frankie Edgar is brought to you by BetterHelp. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. Listen, so when things aren't working out for you, it's normal to feel stuck and you don't know who to reach out to. Navigating any life's challenges can make you feel unsure. Whether it's a career change, a new relationship, maybe you're becoming a new parent. It's a lot to figure out on your own. You should talk to a real professional, license therapist who is a professional all right and uh my friends at uh better help therapists are trained to help you figure out uh, the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills so you're not so stressed out better help has connected over three million people with licensed therapists it's convenient it's online all right and as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. All right, just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily just switch therapists. No harm done. It's too easy. It can be simpler, all right? No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash shop. That's betterhelp.com slash shop, S-C-H-A-U-B. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash shop. Now let's get back to the program. 
Uh-huh. And dude, talk about full circle. You retire, and I don't know if you remember this. You were my first, te- technically the first ever food truck guest when I flew yeah, out to that's Jersey. Right. Yeah, yeah. We and we had that r- pizza. Oh, yeah, Marucas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Pizza was yeah. great. Yeah, dude. yeah. Oh, pizza yeah. was so tomato good. pie. Tomato pie. Yeah, yeah. man, it oh, was yeah. good. Oh yeah. And they said it was something in the Jersey water. Oh, that's, that's what they said for the dough. I feel like everyone says that, like the New yeah, York, the New York dough, City, the, the water. water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, was like, I feel like true. your water's yeah. awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, think how that was a hot second ago, dude. That was the that was the that was like the seed that Jeez, birthed that was over five years ago. Oh probably. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. damn near wow. six. Yeah, wow. Wow. but that was that was where it got me the idea because I had so much fun doing that. We were just shooting the shit, yeah. and eating pizza. I was like, we had to do something like that, but I can't go to restaurants all the time. I was like, I'm in LA. They have great food trucks. That's a great. So I idea. pitched that. that was money. That was money. Here we are, man. Yeah. Full circle, dude. That is. That's fucking great. Isn't that cool? Hell yeah. Yeah, Jersey was dope when uh, Jersey Shore like obviously exploded. Literally one of the biggest TV shows of all time, especially reality TV. As a, I mean, you're the I think you're the mayor of New Jersey. I mean, yeah, you're the yeah. face of New Jersey. <laughs> did did he did you kind of give you? We, how'd you feel about Jersey Shore? I felt like it gave you guys like a little bit of a black eye, right? It did. I mean, it's like know, Jeffrey Dahmer in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? For sure, it, it did a little bit. But I mean, everyone's like, "Oh, are people really like that?" I'm like, "Yeah, people really like." Are that. they really? Yeah. I, I just thought they I mean, were like characters. No, I mean, listen, they were the eccentric of, of like the height the height of it, but. There's definitely some. I know some people like that. Really, in Jersey, yeah. Especially the club heads, you know, fucking meat heads, you know. Meat heads, Molly, yeah, XC, yeah, yeah, freaking, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the scene. That's the scene, bro. You yeah. Know? yeah, jewels and shit. Yeah, yeah. It looked fun though. Yeah, it was good times. Good times to seaside. Yeah, but you never went that route. No, 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 no. no yeah, no, no. I was in the gym too much. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to dress like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that just that show. I just felt like kind of gave Jersey maybe a little bit black guy, but it. it but hey, really it brought it brought a lot. You know, I have a lot of friends and family that own businesses over the bridge and, and it brought a bunch of business to them oh, i didn't so, think about it. like yeah. the, like the tourism i bet yeah it, it, it put was, you guys on the map it did i'll be honest like I, i'm familiar familiar with like new york boss and outside that man i mean i fought in jersey that's why i fought yeah. pro cop that was dicey that was like my experience with jersey i was yeah. walking down the well, street that's Nork's a little different like, than, threatening than the shore you know what i'm saying what, what into uh, new york Nork. That's where that's where that's New York, where, right? New York, yeah. And then, then I'm like an, like an hour south of that. It's yeah. a lot of beach. A lot, it's probably a lot nice different. there. Yeah, a lot different. Yeah, New York. They they were literally like, New, is it Newark? Newark, Newark, Newark. Yeah, yeah. When I was walking down the street, like the UFC uh, Reed Harris, like, uh, uh-uh. uh. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to get a soda. He's like, no, you're not. Yeah. Nah. I was like, it's that bad. He's like, yeah. I was like, whatever. I'm walking down there. It was even someone from Jersey. Just someone was like, fuck you, Yankee. <laughs> Some, he was American, and I was fighting a Croatian. <laughs> Do a fucking orange at me, dude. Get out for real. Yeah, I was like, what oh, the dude. fuck? Yeah, yeah, Reed's yeah. like, I told you. I'm like, no, that guy's not like some gangbanger. That's some punk. weird yeah, yeah. anti-American American. <laughs> you know, it was weird, dude. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I, yeah, Jersey is a special place. Yeah, no, it's cool. Even when I was a kid, uh, they used to have the MTV Beach House in Seaside a bunch. Even before before the Jersey oh, really? Shore show. So like, you know, we go over the bridge, check out the, the you know during spring break and stuff. You so do your always, thing. It was always like the the, the atmosphere. But there. I feel like Jersey's getting a good name now because most of the, like really successful successful people I know the, who work in New York all live in Jersey. Like, you have to the Jets, the Giants. Yeah, yeah you have most to. Most people with Showtime, they're all in like Jersey. Absolutely. All the like the entertainers, the rap artists, they're yeah. on Jersey. Yeah. Uh, Joey Diaz is in Jersey. He is. Just yeah. moved there. Yep. Yep. Kind you of, need to connect with me. him on a pod. I do. Yeah. You I need tried, to go on I there. I tried getting him on ours. And then, really? Uh, He's tough to get yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. to get out of the house. I agree. He was yeah. supposed to be on Fight Campaign uh, on Friday, and he was like, something came up. He's like, yeah. "Cock suck! I can't yeah, fucking yeah, do yeah, it." Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, "Okay, don't talk to me <laughs> like that, me though, me. man." <laughs> I'm, uh, Why am I cock sucker? I'm six miles away on Route Nine. I'm like. You're in Lakewood? Yeah. yeah, I'm behind the truck. I'm like, all right, we're here. And then it <laughs> never shows up. Never heard of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I was doing uh, my promotion for my special in New York, he called He called me. It was like, he was like, he, full name was Brendan Chop. He goes, you're in New York. You're not going to stop by and see me. I'm like, yeah, come by, dude. He goes, all right, let's, let's plan on doing a pod tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow at 2 o'clock. I'm like, all right. Noon, I text him, hey, Joey, uh, what do you want to do, man? I'm trying to figure out the schedule. Nothing. Nah. One o'clock, call him, hey, Uncle Joe, here, man, let me know what you're going to do. Nothing. Three days. You're still here? <laughs> no, dude. I <laughs> left, Joey. You know, that's just, that's Joey. I'll connect you and Joe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I just I'm in contact with him. him. He's such a good dude, he's man. The, he reaches out every once in a while. He's a solid, he loves so fighting. Solid. He does, man. He's he the does. best. Actually, I got to see him. There, there's a comedy club in uh, by me, uh, um, Uncle Vinny's in Point Pleasant. Oh, okay. So I got to see him perform, which was fucking he's savage, so, right? So good, so Sa- good, man. Brought the rock the house, dude. And you could tell, like the first, like it was like 45 minutes set. Like
Like toughest follow so of all time. There's imagine. only one yeah, Uncle Joe. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. nightmare. Yeah, I yeah. Can yeah. Imagine. Like it's a nightmare finding you know in the octagon and the guy before you some badass, but falling Joey might be way worse. Yeah, it's yeah, like I, oh this I is I need he's all just, the day. He's he's funny all the time. Non-stop. He's funny all the time. Nonstop. Yeah. And then when when he does your pod, he'll take those uh, those Death Stars. Death Stars. Yeah. Oh. How many milligrams of those? Uh, uh, whatever kills a rhinoceros. <laughs> and he just pops like five of them. He's Where the, most people, they eat one, they're like on and Pluto. They're comatose. Yeah. <laughs> I took one and I'll never do it again. Yeah. And he'll just, con- he'll just boom, boom. I got pretty day. high tolerance. I got to hit him up for oh, these really? death stars. Oh, really? Oh, dude. Yeah, do, yeah, at, yeah. Tell him to bring him when he does your pod. This is going to be so fun. Melt melted on the couch. Oh, dude, this is going to be so fun. Yeah. He just goes, dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, the best. The absolute best. Uh, back to the fight game. So for UFC... Think about it, when you started uh, till now, the game's changed a little bit. Mm. The game's changed a little bit. It was, it was when you were the world champion at 55 is a huge freaking deal. I, and I don't mean to be, you know, I'm the, I love the UFC. I, UFC alumni bleed UFC. Yeah. I really only cover UFC and some one championship, but really I'm Mr. UFC. Yeah. And I love the UFC. But I feel like the game has changed a little bit. Just for, it's not as. It's still star driven. You have your stars, but th- there weren't as many stars, especially when you were doing it. Mm. So I feel like guys like you, BJ Penn, like Chuck Liddell, even John Jones, Chael Sonnen, so like, it, I don't know. It, to me, it almost meant more, if that makes sense. And and I look at like your resume, and the guy, especially the guys you were fighting back then. It's like there's no easy fights in the UFC, yeah. especially now. There's yeah. guys who aren't even ranked who could give the champ a, a real, you know, frit. Absolutely. But, Back then, just, to me, I don't know. It may, it may because, I, I don't know how I put this, maybe because they put on so many fights now. Mm, that's when it that's was like it. so special back in the day. Like right. when you were fighting, it was like must-see TV. Yeah. And for us, especially everyone on the staff here and you, it's like it's still must-see TV, but I feel like for the casual, population, the yeah, casual, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like there's there's, Another there's one, one yeah. every yeah. week. Yeah. It's like It's like, you know, WWE, they just keep going every week. It's like kind say, of. As far, like, you're only as good as your own your last fight in, yeah. M- in UFC, and even more so now. Because literally, you could have a great performance on Saturday. Next Saturday, someone has a great performance. People forget, they forget about your stuff. Yeah. You know? So I just felt like like when you were coming up and like when you were like the champ and doing your thing, it was just like, it was just a special time. Man. Yeah, no, it was, it was just it a was different great. time. It was, it was fun. Um, it was cool to kind of. I mean, I started with Spike, then we went to Fox, yeah, then we had ESPN. So it's kind of cool to come, come up during dude, all that. Went, what did you, it went versus. It went. It was on versus. It was on Spike. Yeah, yeah. Then went to Fox, yeah. and then ESPN. You know, ESPN. Yeah. It's a big boy. Yeah. It's just like so main. I guess. I guess. I. It was maybe more niche back then, but it was niche, and there was less stars. So those stars were like their their star was so bright. Mm. And then now it's more mainstream so there's just a lot more to yeah. kind of pick and choose right. from i guess right. and it, that's not necessarily a bad thing it means yeah. the sport's growing which is great there's, there's i just mean when you were doing it it almost is don't take this wrong way it almost meant more when you were mm. doing it mm. i don't know if, you know i don't that makes sense i think there's so, there's so many fighters now that there's someone like for like back then there was only so many so you had a, a group of fans for one guy yeah now there's fans for everybody because there's so many yeah. different types of fighters that yeah. people are, and there's so many people that are into this you know yeah and it's like when you were fighting you know the guys were tough like especially those you know those top like eight guys are all superstars badasses yeah. you like it was tough to decide who was gonna win like you had these wars like i said now the number of 50 guys can give any top 10 guy a run yeah, for his money. Yeah, and you've absolutely. never heard of him. Yeah, Some no, dude from Dagestan, South Africa, South I Korea. I can't keep up. It's, it's hard to keep up. Oh, I can't pronounce who now. 90% yeah, of the names. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I, same. I just give him random nicknames yeah, too. Yeah. Like, who the hell is he talking about? I'm like, you don't know Patch Eye? They're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know Patch Eye? Well, uh, last time you were on Food Truck, um, we ate the pizza yep. in Jersey, which was fantastic. Now I'm going to feed you some barbecue okay. out of a truck. Let's do it. From, but the, the only difference is the L.A. food trucks, they're good in New York. Certain, like Austin has good ones. Nashville has good ones. L.A. is the, the best capital for yeah. food trucks. So, you know, they, Mark, Mark kind of ruined my food truck stuff. I mean, I hear I'm good, but Mark's always like, in New York, don't eat that to street me. I'm like, why? He's yeah, he's like, right. He's like, where do these guys go to the bathroom? Where do they wash their hands? I'm like, damn. These are all kinda fair right, points. Kind of right. These are fair points, and I would say you're overthinking it. Yeah, yeah. But I he's also it. right. Yeah, right. Yeah, true, Especially true. in New York. It's like, yeah, you think that's chicken, or is it rats of the sky, also <laughs> yeah, known yeah. as pigeon, bubba, <laughs> you know? So uh, this should be real meat. If it's not, you get sick. Hey, no, and I'm, I'm good. It is what it is. At least you don't have a fight coming up. 
What's that? I said, at least you don't have a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, no, fights, sick, no fights. Yeah, it's all we're good. good. So let me feed you and continue this. Let's do it. What's up, brother? Hey, how's it going? How can I help you guys? Uh, just like some barbecue, man. Is there is there a menu or uh, kind of We guess? have uh, sandwiches and we have fries. Our sandwiches are chicken, pulled pork, and brisket sandwiches. Okay. And our loaded fries are with cheese. The choice of meat, chicken, brisket, or pulled pork with jalapenos. And oh, gotcha. Pickles and they're all loaded. They're bomb. Those are my best ones. Gotcha. And what what uh, what sandwich do you recommend? My pulled pork and my brisket are like, they're both like one on one. They're, they're both, both nice. One on one. Oh, oh, one yeah, on one. I'll go with the brisket. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, we'll both do brisket. Both do brisket? Yeah. Perfect. And then do you want the loaded fries? You want to shoot your pants later? Or? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, He's yeah. going loaded fries. I'll yeah. do the regular fries. I'll probably try some of his. Yeah. Okay, what kind of meat would you like on your fries? Uh, I'll do the pulled pork, I guess. Pulled pork? Yeah. And then uh, two briskets and a pulled pork? Yes, sir. Oh, coming up on the triple double, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Triple double. Triple double. Let's take a little break from chatting with the answer all the way from New Jersey, Frankie Edgar, one of the best to ever do it. And we are enjoying this food. I haven't touched mine. I don't know when this ad's going to be placed, but I probably haven't touched mine. Um, listen, man, I'm here to talk to you guys about my friends at Rogue. If you're a regular viewer of any one of my million shows, I work too much, you already know that I love Rogue Nicotine. It's one of the only sponsors that I've ever had that I reached out to them. Your boy got super thirsty in the DMs, and I reached out to Rogue, all right? <coughs> I use their pouch every day, every single day. I use them on podcasts, at the gym, riding my bike, when I'm on stage, um, everywhere. Everywhere I use Rogue. Anytime you guys have seen me, even in pictures, people are like, you have a dip in your mouth? I'm like, no, it's Rogue Nicotine, baby. I use it everywhere. My favorite flavor is the apple. I have it right here. And then followed by the freaking lemon, the lemon drop. I love both of them. I switch them out throughout the day. All right. But they have all sorts of great flavors. They got berry, wintergreen, peppermint, uh, like I told you, honey lemon. The flavor of Rogue destroys anything out there. That's how I got with them. I tried a bunch of other brands and nothing compares to Rogue. They're so tasty. Beyond the pouch, Rogue also makes other great nicotine products like gum, tablets, lozenges, wherever you want to get your nicotine, they got you covered. Um, I'm a pouch guy. I only mess with pouches, all right? So I take it anywhere I want, like flights at the airport, no issues, comedy clubs, restaurants, all good, no restrictions. Rogue is my go-to source for nicotine when I'm riding, performing. I absolutely love it. I reach out to them, like I told you guys, be on my shows because I believe in their products so much. They are hands down the best nicotine on the planet. All right. If you want to try pouches like me or gums, tablets, go to roguenicotine.com. Use the code ROGUE20 for 20% off your order. Again, that's ROGUE20 for 20% off your order of the best of the best nicotine on the planet. We're talking about Rogue Nicotine, baby. Underage sale is prohibited. All right. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. They ain't lying. For more information, visit roguenicotine.com. Last break, kids, and then we're almost on the home stretch. Hopefully you're enjoying this episode of Food Truck Diet with Frankie Edgar. But I got to let you guys know, when you're watching this show right now, while I'm doing this ad right now, I'm on Kratom. That's right, but not just any Kratom, the best on the planet. The only brand that I trust, I'm talking about Happy Hippo. Happy Hippo Kratom is the best hands down and they're the only creating place i trust to put that delicious stuff in my body to fire up this brain i need all the help i can get you guys know this i mess up words all the time okay some say it's ct i beg to differ i think i was born like this big deal kratom helps me step up my game so if you want to step up your game and get focused and feel good and get that brain firing on all cylinders use the best kratom on the planet happy hippo it's the best focus product you can use and it's all natural i use the shots they have the concentrated cherry shots they're in a pink can with a thick hippo on it boom i do that before any shows and your boys geared up that's right and if you want to try kratom and a company you can trust 
Visit happyhippo.com. Use promo code SICKBOY for 20% off for life. Use that code as many times as you want. Share it with your friends, your aunt, your gay uncle, your brother, your sister. It doesn't matter. The whole fam can get in on this. That's 20% off for life when you use promo code SICKBOY at happyhippo.com. Now let's get back to the program. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. It smells good. Dude, ye- yesterday, um, you know, I had three shows and I picked up my new dog. And I, did, I realized when I got home at 11 o'clock at night, I didn't eat all day. All day? All day. Can you do that? I do that sometimes. Uh, never on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never. I'm, you know, I'm thick. That's the yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, I got home, I was like, oh, I'm dizzy. And then I, it finally hit me. I was like, I've been going so hard in the paint, I forgot to eat. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm drink not, coffee. On a weekend, man, I'll drink coffee in the morning. I won't be like 3 o'clock. I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't eat yet. Yeah. Yeah, I can just that. when you're like going. Nonstop. Yeah. The problem, it must have been hard for you, like not at 55, because you know, you could eat a, a Philly cheesesteak and do your thing and still make weight, but at 45, you have to kind of watch your diet, right? I did. I did, not as bad. Like, first time I'm going down at 45, I never got all super strict. And then I realized, like, I'm still only walking around 55. So yeah, I you're like, I'm right. Yeah, right, I'm good. 35, though, was, I had to be strict. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 35, dude. That was, that was. Was that a nightmare? Legit. No, honestly, man, I do everything right. Like, I start eight weeks yeah, you're out. You're professional. I'm 100% disciplined. You know, week of the fight, I probably cut eight pounds. How did you feel at 35? I felt good. I felt good. I never felt like, uh, I mean, I felt skinny. Definitely skinny, you did know? Did you feel weaker? No, I felt pretty solid. Felt pretty good? Solid. Yeah, I did. <clears throat> Isn't it strange to think about, like, if, you know, if you were born 10 years later, like, I wonder if you even would have fought at 55. I uh, am. Yeah. Can you Why look not? at the 55s now, like Makachev? Oh, dude. They're He's my size. Huge. He's huge. my size. Patty yeah. Pimlet? Yeah. We did a food truck with him, 220 pounds. Oh, yeah. That's was crazy. Like, yeah. I mean, it's just they're getting bigger, faster, stronger. So it's like, I wonder if you, like, I want, yeah. if, if you I could move your career 10 years f- forward, right, into the future, you're born at a different time. Like, you would probably start off at 45, but, you know, you know, probably been champ at 35, 45, yeah. like double. Double yeah, champ? I think I'd. Yeah, well, isn't that interesting? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, just shit, walking yeah. around like fuck it. I'm, I like the way it went, though. You know, to be, oh to be able to say I fought at all three different weight classes. You know, that was, that was cool. And then to be yeah. the world champion at 55 yeah. as a smaller dude, I, th- yeah. I also think that's why he kind of blew up and everyone's like rooting for you. Not to say you know, you were Rudy, but you're like right, right. the smaller, like, yeah. runt of the division and uh-huh. doing work. Yeah, man, yeah. You know? Definitely. I, I uh, that to me, that's more, you know, watch, we watched the first UFC, it was Hoyce Gracie fighting monsters, you know? It's yeah. kind of what I was doing a little bit. You know? You're fighting in monsters. Sense, you know what I mean? Like great man and that's like, that's like thick. the true martial artist is technique. It's always technique. Yeah. Strength is for the weak. Yeah. Enzo Gracie always says, strength for the weak. Yeah. You know, technique is, is king. Yeah, until you make strength and technique. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Now now it's the hybrid. But no, I'm with you. That's, and that's really how, what you just do start from. Yeah. Like for the smaller guy who's in a right. strong, like right. the technique. Yeah, you were like that. You're like the poster boy of that. Yeah. Like those great Maynard fights where, you know, you get knocked down, come Fuck back. Yeah. People shout, Rudy, Rudy. I'm like, dude, <laughs> first of all, Rudy's was off sides. Yeah. Know? And he played one play. He won't play, right? Yeah, yeah one play. Bullshit, the whole yeah. story. Yeah. 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 They used to do a bet on it. It's like, think how pissed you are if you're Joe Montana. Like, they made a movie about Rudy, and you're <laughs> Joe Montana. <laughs> you won a national championship. You're one of the best quarterbacks to ever do it. And dude, Rudy kind Rudy, of movie. Rudy. You can't even get a lifetime special. They can't even do one of those lame Hallmark movies on Joe Montana. And Rudy's like the top sports movie of all time. The guy was off sides. It's insane. You know, he, you know the other thing is, is <laughs> I'm going so hard on Rudy. You know, the other thing is, is A, did a Ponzi scheme, went to prison for it. But no, uh, afterwards, bad guy. But then also before that, he was in the military. So the military paid for his school to go to Notre Dame. So in the movie, you know, where it's like he's trying to figure it out. And like mm. his, his family's like he's... Whatever they're called. Working class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah working class. No, the military the people at all. Yeah. Uh, That's why Joe Montana hates him. So wait, he went, wait, he went to Ponzi scheme, Rudy? Yeah. Years later, so he went on a whole uh, speaking tour, like going around the world, about, like a motivational talk, off one play. Talk about turning fucking... Wow. Shit. That's, hey, made it happen. Chicken poop into chicken soup, dude. I mean, <laughs> one play, and he was like, cool, say less. I'm going to create an entire business around this. And they got in trouble with the Ponzi scheme. Oh, uh, I know I hear yeah. that. That's a, that, and you know, you think about Joe Montana, he's like, well, I'm one of the best to ever do it. National champion at Notre Dame, NFL MVP, Super Bowl MVP. I sell Skechers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's like he literally hates Rudy. <laughs> if you ever, if you, br- if, if I had Joe Montana on here, it'd be an hour special on how much we hate Rudy. Yeah. We both hate Rudy. Oh, that's yeah. funny, dude. He was offsides to start with, so it shouldn't even got started. And then Joe Montana's like, 
bro, it's not like he won the game for us. We're up by 30 points, and they put him in. Yeah. And then like he's like, they put him on his shoulders to make fun of him. When you hear him talk, you're like, Joe Montana's a hater, but also I get the resentment. Yeah. <laughs> Weird rant on Joe Montana. Back to you and Rudy. Um, did, and the game's changed, too, in the UFC a little bit because when you were coming up, even me, like, social media wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. like it, I think it probably started towards the later end of my career, kind of started popping. Like, I don't think I had an Instagram to like my last year in the UFC. It wasn't really a thing. I like, think what, 20, 2012, 2011 is when I think I got an Instagram or something like that. You were before me. I, yeah. Yeah, I think maybe I got my Twitter like eight years ago, Instagram shortly after. Like, not that, I don't, it wasn't a thing. And no. then now it's like, it's everything. Man, yeah. guys are getting like main events and shit because they have millions of followers. Yeah. You're like, holy yeah. shit. Right. It's, it's just a different, and then also, like, they're showing their training, and they're showing all that, and, like, Joe Burrow, who's the quarterback for Cincinnati Bengals, mm -hmm. Heisman Trophy winner for uh, LSU, they say, you got any advice for young kids coming up in college football and trying to make it to the pros? And he goes, don't post your workout. Just do it. Yeah, do He's it. like, these kids are yeah. too worried about what everyone's thinking, about yeah. social media. He's like... Uh, you know, so I don't post my work. Though. I always say, stop talking about training and training. Yeah. You know I mean? Stop showing us about training. Yeah, just can't train. stop, won't stop. Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. Well, yeah. you clearly stopped to put this filter on. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's weird, yeah. right? But I mean, that's just the nature of the world, the way the world's going, right? Yeah, you know? so, and I think what blew the UFC up is because the UFC is the best at, at adapting. I don't know if it's the, the marketing employees, maybe their younger fan base, whatever they're mm -hmm. doing, but the younger employees there are always kind of on the, they're on the front end of the, mm. like what's pop and what's trending. So you see, like they signed the Nelk Boys. Yeah, 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 right. Three years ago, if you're like, hey Dana, who are the Nelk Boys? Like, who? Yeah. Who wants milk? You know, it's like he would have no clue. You know, so it's like whoever's doing that, they know what they're doing. They yeah. keep the UFC trending. It's like always. I mean, it's, it was the second biggest uh, Instagram out of the sport leagues. Is it really? Something like that. I think the NBA is maybe higher than them, or they just passed the NBA. Really? Oh, or is it there. that big? Yeah. They're okay. big and they're good at like the videos and like going viral. Like whoever's yeah. running that's a genius. Yeah, you know, no, genius. definitely. But when you're fighting, it wasn't a thing. Like no, not at all. I, I mean, me and some fighters talk shit to each other on Twitter, but it, you would like not really. Yeah. But then I think who changed the game and you're supposed to fight him, Conor McGregor. Yeah, he did. Like he sure. just changed the game. Mm. And I think a lot of fighters are like, oh, that's how you get rich and famous and like get to the top and make all this money. So then it became this like not authentic kind of. Watered down version Characters of Connor. Yeah. yeah, so it was like, yeah, that's not your, no. in your nature. Yeah. Talk about that shit. No, uh -uh. And there's so many fake Connors. It's crazy. You know, it, it, he's good at what he. I mean, he's well, the he, best ever. Yeah, to ever. And, like and he went, he was starching dudes when he was doing all that too. That's, that, the, that's, 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 that's the difference. That's you know? it because yeah. he's like the he's the green elephant in the circus. When all of us were gray, he was right. a green elephant. He would talk. Right. But the number one thing that a lot of these kids kids are forgetting is. Connor was starching yeah. dudes. Yeah, put him out. Like the Chad Mendes fight, the yeah. Jose Aldo, the fight against Eddie Alvarez. I think it's one of the best 155ers that I've ever, ever, any weight class. Mm. Right? His fight against Eddie Alvarez at 155 is insane, mm. dude. Insane. Mm. It was. But yeah. so then these guys get in there talking shit. It's like, you just won by a decision, bro. Yeah, you know, yeah right, like, right, right, right. You know, like Connor did that and starched Jose Aldo yeah, in whatever, seconds, 13 seconds or whatever. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you gotta understand, he put in the, the other side of it and then this came along with it. Well, that fight, I, I, I fought that same weekend, Jose Aldo and Connor fought. I fought Mendez the night before. I knocked oh, Mendez right, out. I, I got knocked Mendez out. Lorenzo, Dana, tell me, you're getting the title shot. Fucking Connor goes out there, starts his uh, Aldo. I was like, damn, there goes my title shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah, but then you and uh, Connor were supposed to fight. Yeah. I remember he was talking yeah. mad trash to you. Yeah. I mean, he never really talked trash to me, actually, believe it or not. Never over the top. Never, he, he goes in on a lot of people. He Never goes over in, the top. but again, I think it's because you know Connor came up watching you too. Like, mm -hmm. there's a certain there's certain guys you don't do you don't disrespect the Robbie Lawler. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah like, yeah. there's certain guys mm -hmm. where it's like, what are you doing, dude? Right. You know, it's like you just you just don't. It's like yeah. the first rule of Fight Club: you don't bet <laughs> against Frankie yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> unless you're a communist. And, you know, and Robbie Lawler, it's yeah, like, you don't yeah, do that. Yeah, or yeah. BJ Penn, you don't yeah, do yeah, right, that. Right, right. And you also don't. You can talk some shit if you're supposed to fight, but you don't go too go hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, don't because yeah, yeah. they're legends. Right. Yeah. So uh, he would talk some trash to you, and then that fight just never came to fruition, no, huh? Never happened. Yeah, we, it, a couple times it almost happened. Uh, even later on, like I said, I wanted to. I think I did an interview. I'm like, yeah, we, I missed on that. You know, I want my grandkids to say I fought Conor McGregor. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, listen, whatever you think of him as a fighter, he's still the most polarizing guy you have in this sport, and he's going to be remembered of all time. Forever. He's going to be remembered that forever. Oh, I don't know? think we'll ever have another. Yeah. 
uh, it's gonna be tough. I yeah. mean, maybe. But I mean, yeah, you, it'll you be think, tough. Like he, he's just a game changer. Like yeah. now, how are you gonna change the game? Yeah. Like, social media, YouTube, going that viral, doing what he did, Jose Aldo, Eddie Alvarez, Chad Mendez. Uh, uh, you know, the stuff that he pulled off, and then the Floyd May Mayweather stuff. Like, yeah, I, I, I mean, it seems like those sh that ship has sailed. Like, obviously, now people are redoing of the Jake Pauls of the world and, you know, these crossover fights, but the, the first guy to do it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there'll be someone. Just like back in the day when it was the, the stars were Randy, Chuck Liddell, you know. True. And then, and then they're like, who's going to be next? Then you have GSP, Anderson. Who's going to be next there? Then you get Connor. There's so someone, someone's going to be there. Someone's You're right. There. I mean, I'm, he's I'm, definitely the, the top of the I'm top just saying as far as, like, completely, like, game, like, bigger than the sport. Like, he was the guy that my mom was like, is, is that Irish kid fighting? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah Irish right. kid? You're talking about Conor McGregor? Yeah, he, crossed, he crossed into the mainstream more than anybody. Yeah, I think it would be tough to get another one of him. Again, you might be right. Listen, you're also talking to a guy who hates electric cars. Like <laughs> I refuse to adapt. I don't to think I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I hate him. It's yeah. so stupid. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> and how close was the Conor fight? Was ever anything like, I know nothing signed, but. Nothing signed. When, I, when he fought Mendez, no, no, it wasn't Mendez. Who Mendez on short notice? Yeah, when he fought, yeah, when he fought Mendez on short notice, I, 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 that's when I thought I was going get, to get the fight. And they decided to go with Mendez. And they decided to go with Mendez. I think UFC said yes to me, but then he said yes to Mendez. Smart. At the mo at the moment, yeah, I think so. I think he knew Mendez wasn't training. I think Mendez, Mendez was not training. Was in the woods, you know. He was like killing the animals. Yeah. yeah, doing his thing. He was like, yeah, I'll take it. And then remember that that like that first round wasn't great for Conor. He got taken down. Dude, he got just a bunch of times. That was yeah. his game plan yeah. too. Yeah. And then remember he was hitting him like thumbing up and then hitting with that body. You're yeah. like, oh my god. Yeah. And and Mendez, he gets tired. He gets yeah. tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's tired. <laughs> yeah, you fought Mendez. I did. Yeah, yeah you messed with him. Up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, that was a good one. We knocked him out the first round. So. Great one, dude. Oh yeah. yeah. That was a big boy one. Yeah. Yeah. Is it weird to see guys that you know like? I'll, there's a you look at the list of guys that have retired like just in the past year. It's like, I mean, it's a Hall of Famer list. Dude. Oh yeah, Aldo, uh, Cowboy, you know, yeah. Cowboy, Iwana. That's right. Yeah, man. yeah. Like yeah. just you, and it's like Dillashaw now. Yeah, Dillashaw just retired. Yeah, yeah. You look at the list, you're like, holy shit. It's just, I mean, it's bound to happen. Getting right? older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like real. we're just getting older, man. Yeah, for real, it's fucking scary to. Because it's about. like I remember the fir like Iwana's first fight. Iwana's first fight. And like when Chad Mendes retired and like TJ, I'm like, God, I remember when he was just like just coming, coming up. up, dude. Yeah, I feel like those guys are young compared to my, all those guys. I know. Except Cowboy. I mean, Cowboy's same, but everyone else came in after me. Cowboy's yeah. been doing a hot second. Yeah. Cowboy's a guy who, you know, obviously retired, but, you know, on to bigger, better things. He's mm -hmm. another guy, like, a lot of the fighters can kind of look at him because, you know, he's this... You know, same where there's like so much respect there that the same that you have with your fan base than the, the hardcores. It's like Cowboy's like this. He, even though he's not, he doesn't really need to fight. I think yeah. the same with you. It's mm -hmm. like the respect's there and like people are intrigued with what you guys doing with Cowboy's like this bigger than life personality. He did it his way too. He did it, you know. Yeah. So it was like fucking. What is it? Uh, uh, wake boarding or wake wake boarding on day week of the fight and yeah, like jump out of airplanes bikes. and yeah, shit, great, like great, yeah, yeah, like riding bulls and shit, yeah. like the day of the fight. And he's just like this yeah. dude is wild. He is man. wild, man, definitely. Wild boy, yeah. He's uh, me and Cowboy go way back when I didn't have money. He let me stay in his house to train at Jackson oh, wow, Jackson cool. gym. Uh -huh. He's on the fight companion on uh, Friday. Oh, I haven't nice. seen him in yeah. a hot second. He's a fun dude too. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm curious to ask him. It's like, and you weren't this guy. Like, I, I always respected your career. Like, you're pretty business minded about it. I don't know if it's your manager, you picking the fights. But for Cowboy, it's like that anytime, anywhere mentality, which the fans love. At the end of the day, we've never seen a guy who's been anytime, anywhere get the title. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a tough business because mm -hmm. you're taking short notice fights. Yeah, yeah, you're right. not prepared, uh, right. and this guy's prepared. Yeah. So sometimes it works for you. You might be compensated a little extra when you do that, but in the I think in the grand scheme of things, well, if it your goal is out. to be the champ, the champ, yeah. it, it'd be hard to be that guy. Right, agreed. Yeah, it was just like Cowboy was the perfect guy for that. You know, now guys like uh, like Patty Pimlet's hilarious. Speaking of changing the guard, Patty Pimlet, I was like, you know, he was damn near two hundred twenty pounds. He's so thick, dude. It's crazy. Like eating multiple burgers, like just a great dude. And I go, hey, uh, and this is on here. I go. Hey, what if they ask you to take a short notice fight at 55? Did you drop, you know, 70 pounds or whatever? And he started laughing, like straight up laughing. Like I told some great joke, and he's like, "No, why would I take a short notice fight? 
He's like, I would never. It's smart. He goes, I make more money outside of fighting than I do fighting. I would never kill myself and take a short nose fight. Like even these guys that are like, uh, who was it? Uh, I can't think of who it was, but like they're like, I'm not taking a, a fight until I'm getting paid money. You know, it's smart. Like me, I, when I was coming up, I'm like, I'll fight. The, let me give me the best guy. Give me the best guy. I'll fight anybody. Because I thought that was the mentality to get to the top. It was the mentality, but then also, especially. When we were coming up too, you were before me, but I was, you know, right in the middle. You, the, the high, like when you were, when you won your belt, and I was in the UFC. So it's like I was there when you're doing the damn thing. But we didn't have a lot of leverage either. Yeah, like guys yeah. now, like you look at Sugar Sean O'Malley, you got Patty Pimlet, a lot of the these O'Malley, guys. That's what I was about. Yeah, 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 Sugar, yeah, He's Sugar. Smart, smart, but smart. They just they got a beer contract. All right, now I'll fight Peter Yan. Yeah. yeah, and for him, it's like, hold up, dude. I make this much off Twitch. I make this much off Facebook, YouTube, my Instagram, and I'm undefeated. It's yeah. like, nah, that's not even worth it to me. So right. he's like, damn. And they literally, he's like, all right, you're making this much. So we gotta switch it up. Yeah. So th- there's just more leverage. There's more ways for guys to make money now mm-hmm. than before. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's uh, just a different game. It is dude. different, and you think it's just gonna keep evolving to, as it goes, right? You think? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You can get, I think what's happening now, like your son's into, you know, mm. well, obviously wrestling yeah, and football yeah. and UFC in general. My son's into it. So it's yeah. like you're going to get kids who, yeah, they're going to wrestle because, you know, that's one aspect of mixed martial arts. But you're also going to get kids who they wrestle, they're doing jiu-jitsu on the side, but they're, they, they're doing some martial arts and boxing because yeah. they have the hopes to get to the UFC. So yeah. you're just going to get a better athlete over time. Yeah, yeah. We're you're still seeing it now. You're seeing it now, right? Yeah, oh, These dude, somebody's got nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Nuts. The, you know the, the game changer at, at heavyweight. At heavy Because, you know, in America, like, our heavyweight athletes are the most NFL, NBA. Right, yeah. It's like no giant dude, you know, out of Georgia. If you're like, hey, what do you want to do? He's like, I'm going to fight in the UFC. He's like, no, I'm playing, playing football, football at Georgia. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting drafted by the like, Tennessee Titans. Like, that's the game plan. Right. You know, so I think eventually, especially once the pay starts picking up, people you, start. you're going to get those big boys. Yeah. The real, like, our real, yeah, real yeah, athletes. Yeah. yeah, that, that. I mean, imagine LeBron James fighting, you know, someone that size. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah, he'd have to get tougher, but yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'm saying his body. No, I feel you. Yeah, like that freak of an yeah, athlete. Yeah. Yeah, nuts, dude. That'd be wild. I mean, nuts. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. With, with your son, it's tough. Like, I struggle with it, too. I tell my son, I'm like, no no one who's fought in the UFC, their, their dads don't drive Ferraris, but yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? It's yeah. like, he, he, uh, you know, like, when I uh, did food truck with Tyson, I was like, you know, they say uh, boxing comes from the streets. Mm. And, dude, he just stopped eating and was like, it comes from the gutters. I was like, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. y- it's tough to come from a, you know, a good life and want to fight. Because, right. you, know, you know, it's better than anybody, dude. Yeah. You've been at 17 years. It's like, and you've been at the highest level. It's like, it's the hardest gig in the world, man. It's like, hard. it's not. Yeah. You got to want to do this. It's not like, you, you don't do this to pay bills. You got to want to do this. You have like to be more than If you do this to pay money. bills, you, you know, it's not going to last long. Agree. Yeah, it has to be more than the money. Yeah. You know, like obviously you want to be compensated, but right. it, you kind of got it. Hopefully, it comes. Mm. But you got you got to be more set on being champion than anything. Yeah, exactly. Th- with the championship comes the money. You know. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. you know, when people go. <clears throat> they ask me like, "Oh, do you think Connor's gonna fight again?" I was like, "Yeah, I think he does, but I don't think we'll ever get the the hungry Connor who what he did to Jose Aldo, what mm-hmm. he did to Eddie Alvarez. I don't, or even with Khabib, even though you know he's a wild boy doing that camp, but just that tenacity and like that drive. I don't know if you can compete at that level when you have a yacht and you're in Gucci yeah. sheets. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like because he's on this yacht, he's gonna have to you know uh, dock the yacht. Find a camp, find you know, train, and and try and train, and then that, he's yeah. probably staying at the Four Seasons, eating good. And it's like, yeah. and you're fighting Makachev, who's in Dude, the he rode here on a goat. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, he don't know what Gucci is, <laughs> and he's he's making money. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, nuh-uh. that's like uh-huh. Khabib. Yeah, they, Khabib's like, uh, you know, the Queen of England. We have no <laughs> idea how much money he has. <laughs> you're right. They're, they're you're like, right. They say he is he's stupid loaded. rich. Yeah, and drives like a t- Toyota like Tundra. Yeah. Around Dagestan. Yeah, they don't care. He, he don't give care. Like, he's uh-huh. not doing it for money. Uh-huh. Like, he just, I think he still lives with, like, his mom and dad before his dad passed. He's yeah. just chilling. Yeah, yeah, I read that. His mom still lives with him and stuff. Nuts, dude. Yeah. You know, it's like, and you're fighting that guy? And you're on a yacht in Gucci sheets? It's tough to compete there. It's just, it, there's nothing like fighting. Mm. That's why I respect, like, uh, you know, guys like Floyd Mayweather. E- even yourself, it's like, you're doing it so long, man. I'm sure financially you're good, but it's like, especially Floyd. Not now. Now he's fighting, like... 
YouTubers yeah, and yeah, that. Right. It's like, how much money do you need? But well, yeah. like before, when he was like 40 and 0, 45 and 0, yeah, like, why and then he's yeah. fighting like tough guys. Canelo, I mean, geez, even I mean, even yeah. when he was you know 35, 40 and 0, and he, yeah, fuck Canelo, he's younger when Canelo's younger, right. but. It's like at that level, you're still able to like dominate and win, not get hit. And you're talking about a guy, you know, supposedly worth like two billion dollars. Like to me, that's insane. Yeah. Or a guy like Tom Brady. Right. Yeah. Well, it's uh, like, I mean, what are it, we doing? Yeah. I mean, you know, love of the why, game. Yeah, love of the game. You know, and why, for you, why that's you what you played football in the beginning. You fucking loved it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. 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 And and for you, it was always always fighting from day one. Like wrestling, it was, you always want to be a fighter. I mean, I didn't, I got, well, you know, coming to wrestling, I didn't, UFC wasn't even really a thing, yeah. you know, so I didn't, I was a fucking plumber, really, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then once fighting came around, I, I didn't want to plum, do plumbing no more. So I was like, God, that plumber has great footwork. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I, honestly, I didn't know shit. I could dig a hole like a motherfucker, but that's about it. That's a tough <laughs> gig, dude. Yeah, my, my my old man owned a plumbing company, so oh, commercial, commercial plumbing. Yeah. I wasn't doing people's toilets and stuff. Oh, gotcha. But I was carrying pipe, digging holes and stuff, you know. Yeah, like blue collar, like yeah. rough work, yeah. dude. So, f so for you, it was like, what was it? It was like you're wrestling and then kind of fell into the UFC? Well, I mean, I, I graduated college. I, I was a political science major. Cause I don't know how that happened. But I, I went to school to wrestle. You know yeah, I mean? uh, and that just happened. I graduated. I thought I, I thought I might be a cop, so that's why I did poli sci. Oh, that's cool. So uh, I remember trying out for the cop thing. I, I passed the test, and I did the interview, and I, it, they're like, you know, just the, you know how cops were trying to grill you and stuff. And yeah. I, in my mind, I'm, you know, I'm playing a game, but in my head, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be a cop. I walked out of the interview. I got the job, and I was like, I'm not taking this. Oh, really? Yeah, just because they kind of turned you yeah, off? Yeah, it just turned you off, you know? Like, like these guys suck. Like, someone's, someone's saying stuff. Like, what are you going to do to them? I'm like, oh, I'm going to do nothing. You're like, kick nah, him in the yeah. head? Yeah. He's all, no. <laughs> you, oh, you're telling me the Jersey cops weren't friendly? Yeah, yeah, you know, right. it's like, <laughs> right. like, these guys aren't nice. So then you weren't going to do the cops. So, yeah, so then I, then I worked, you know, I got into the union, uh, started working as a plumber uh, I did that for a couple years uh, I was fighting right away I fought like three weeks after I came home from school because you because you got done with wrestling and who was like hey you should try cage well, fighting well no it was the ultimate fighter season one came out my senior year of college so I remember watching it and uh, a cost check was on was on that yeah, season that's right and he wrestled for Edinburgh wrestled Clarion we wrestled each other all the time so oh, I'm like, oh shit I know him you know and I'm like oh shit wrestlers can do this yeah. I'm like well I'm gonna definitely find a place to train Kurt Pellegrino no I, I remember Kurt Pellegrino yeah. uh, was it Batman Batman yeah oh, yep. what a throwback had the Batman yeah, tattoo yep, on his dad yep. He's badass at yeah. jiu-jitsu. He's a real good jiu-jitsu, oh, good yeah. wrestler. I know him from wrestling. He's still alive, yeah? He is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. a badass. Uh -huh. He still he runs a school. His guy, Frank Francis Marshall, just fought. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his guy. Oh, damn. Shout and, out to uh, Kurt, man. Yeah, I what a throwback name. And I hit him up. I'm like, hey, I'm, uh, you know, I want to train. He's like, yeah. He's like, well, I'm actually moving to Florida next week. He's like, well, come to my gym. You can train here for this week. So I was like, all right. And a guy took over that gym, so I just stayed. And, and who took over that gym? This guy, Rob Garino, who's low-level, you know, coach, whatever. So you just started going in there? Started going there, and I fought three weeks later. Just in a regional show? In an underground show in New York. That's New York the shit I'm talking about. Yeah, underground. Yeah, that's right. It was in sanction New York. Yeah, not sanctioned. I had, it was no rules, no weigh-in. I, I ended up being the main event, uh, and we were doing one 15-minute round straight. Old, screw this is some yeah. Lionheart Van yeah, Damme yeah. shit. Yeah, dudes were in the, in the, it was in Bronx, in the Bronx, in a boxing gym, like 200 degrees in the middle of July, and people were drinking 40s in the stands. This it, sounds it, fantastic. It was all, my, my, my dad was on the ropes while I'm fighting. What? Yeah. Oh, dad, back yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the guy you fought was same size or yeah, no? Yeah, he was pretty much the same size. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I had bought him in the fight. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my go-to in the street fights. So I had bought like, Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Holy shit, yeah. dude. So you headbutt this dude, and that's, is that how you want to be? Well, I headbutt him, and I, you He's know, mount, mounted him in TKL. Yeah. And then from there, you're like, man, let's keep rolling. I did. I broke my face in that fight, too, though. From the headbutt? No. He actually caught me in the tie, tie clinch and need, need me. Uh, right in, like, the first, like, 30 seconds. So, you know, I didn't didn't notice. Uh, you know, it hurt, felt hurt yeah. a little bit. And I, we went out to dinner after, went to, Nor went to Nork, to the Portuguese restaurants in Nork. Okay. Afterwards, I went with my family. I go in the bathroom. My nose was bleeding a little bit, I, but I didn't look like I even fought. Yeah. I blow my nose, my whole face filled up with air. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. We're sitting there, me and my coach sitting trying to push the, push the air out of my eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's science. <laughs> I go outside, it's my science. mom's like, oh my God. What happened? Went to the hospital, like, yeah, you broke your sinus passage. Jesus. Um, yeah. And so you were out for how long with that? 
I mean, a couple weeks, you know. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, there's no commission giving no, you a 60-day yeah, yeah, yeah. suspension. But I mean, I was, I, was, I was on a job site on Monday, though. <laughs> just a plumber, just yeah. eyes yeah. like a <laughs> goldfish, one of those fat goldfish. And so then you could take that fight, and then you have five before you get in the UFC? Then I had five, yeah, five before in the UFC. Yeah. Five mm -hmm. in the UFC and more underground fights? No, that was only that one. That was only one? Yeah, yeah probably best. Yeah, and yeah. then, uh, so then you start doing like the regional circuit? I did the regional, the uh, um, Ring of Combat reality fight. In Ring of Combat, a lot of guys got Matt Sarah, yeah, hell yeah. Chris Weidman. Yeah, you know, dude. Yeah. Uh, Uriah, Uriah Hall came out of there, yeah? Yeah, Uriah Hall, That's yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, some real baddest came out of there. And then you try out for the, the Ultimate Fighter season five or season four? Season five. Yeah, five. yeah, it's the first season for 155. And then they go, then UFC goes, we're all set. We don't, we didn't want Frankie. Nope. But then they call you, and if I if memory serves me right, you fight Tyson Griffin. Tyson Griffin, yeah. Tyson Griffin, I'm going to go and say this on record, best legs of all time in the UFC. Most His thick bronze boy. legs and the, the, his ass, his glutes, and his quads. Yeah. And he had that, you know, he had that head. It was like <laughs> this. He had a giant head. Just a sap and tan. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's your first fight in the UFC. If I, again, if I remember, I have a splash CT, it'd be cool. He gets you in a knee bar. He did, yeah. Get you a knee bar. Last and you got a minute out left. of it, right? I mean, uh, kind of, not really. It, 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 it popped twice. It popped twice. Um, but I knew there was like a minute left. I'm like, fuck it, you know. Get it later. And uh, I, got it, I got it past like the, 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 the fulcrum, the, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. then I was like, all right, I'm good. I like just, this I just sucks, pounded his, yeah. I give, trying to give him dead legs, you know, for the last 30 seconds. And then you won via decision. Uh, I won decision, your yeah. First fight, this is, kids take, no, your first fight in the UFC, this is how the game's changed. Your first yeah. fight in the UFC is against Tyson Griffin. Yeah. Who is a monster. And I remember, I, I took that fight on four weeks' notice, and I had, oh. a, I had a sinus infection for two weeks. I was, like, the worst sinus infection of my life. You barely trained. I could, yeah, I could barely train. And, uh, Do you I think it's from the head butt back in the day? Or? No, 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 no. no. Honestly, just, you wonder what it's from? I, I, I got punched in my tooth training for the fight. I got an abscess in my tooth. So I had to get a root canal. The infection? Root canal leads to science infections. Oh, damn. Ken, I guess. And that's wow. what happened. And I was, I was struggling, man. And uh, I remember I got so tired in that fight that I thought I had a concussion because I was throwing up on the way back to the, to the locker room. I was just exhausted. So I was so exhausted. antibiotics and stuff? Probably, yeah, crush yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember going back. I'm in the locker room, laying down. They're like, "Hey, Lorenzo." This, I, this, I didn't know shit. I was like, really got into fighting. I didn't know much yeah. about MMA. Lorenzo wants to talk to you. I'm like, "Well, tell him he's got to wait." They're like, "Nah, get the fuck up and talk to this guy." You're like, "This is the <laughs> guy. This yeah. is the guy." There's Dana. Then yeah. there's he's the final boss. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right. So he came in. and was like, "Wow, great fight." I'm like, "Oh, thank you, man." He was cool. Yeah, yeah cool shit. Yeah, yeah. the Fertitas were always great. They were fucking. Great. That's what. If I had any issues, I'd go around the they big boys. I, and go I feel to the like uh, that that family feel. UFC left with them. Agree. Yeah. You know? It's more it's more business now, it's more right. corporate now. Right. With them is more there's more heart and soul into yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah, not it's not it's that it's a bad thing, it's, it's the, the progression business. of it. Yeah, right? yeah, it's just Mickey Mouse like, I'll take it from here. Right, right. Yeah, you're like, okay, this seems strange, but yeah, that's what happened. So yeah, so then you get in the UFC and then yeah, Tyson Griffin, then you go on this crazy freaking streak, man. It's just nuts because now like your son wants to come up in the game. There's not an exact blueprint, but there's more of a blueprint than we were fighting. Like, mm, yeah, I fell yeah. into it too. There was, yeah. it wasn't a plan. You right. just kind of fell into it. Yeah, like. But now like kids can kind of go. Oh, I want to fight in the UFC. It's like I mean, we can, you you know, do this, train this, train this, and then you know, get in the regional scene, become the champion there, and then hopefully they know you. And now you have the Dana White Contender Series, which I think is the best route to the UFC. So and tough. And the Ultimate Fighter. Dana, Dana White Contender Series. series. I, think I mean, I, listen, if you're a guy, that's great. But if you're, like, you have to win emphatically on the Contender Series to get signed. Yeah, I, I like feel that like you gotta, It has to be an exciting yeah. fight, and you got to win. And oh, everyone, like, these guys are good, man. They're really good. Look at good. these guys coming off Contender Series. Yo, know, those guys that win by decision. And they're like, yeah. Well, that, like that guy who just, uh, his name is Brendan. Shout out to Brendan. He uh, won on Dana White Contender Series. Pretty exciting fight. And everyone's like, oh, he's, I bet he gets a contract. And Dana was like, no, we're good. We're going to go with that other guy who threw a spinning heel kick who's you know not doing yeah, much now right. in the UFC. Right. That guy was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna take my ball and go to PFL. He just won the PFL, won a million oh, bucks. Oh, yeah, I just said, uh, Brennan uh, Lo Lo Lohan. Or yeah, something, something like that, that. Yeah, 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 great story. Yeah, he shot, that's right, he, he, yeah. he took a shot in the last, the last yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, that. we don't want that. Yeah, He's yeah. like, all right, I'm gonna go to PFL, won a million bucks. Yeah, hey, this thing's, I mean, maybe that's a blessing in disguise right yeah. there. You know? But when you look at that contender series, like, you look at the names that come out of there, like Jamal Hill, uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley, 
And then I think the the next great white hope, since you're retiring, uh, Bo Nickel. Oh, yeah, man. If Bo Nickel's a stock, yeah, like, dude. he is. He even is. if he's one of those weird crypto stocks, I know it's dicey right now, <laughs> I would invest. And I don't need Jim Krause's information <laughs> no, to bet no, on him. Good, like, I'm good. in, dude. Like, yeah. Bo Nickel is Were you supposed to fight, though, in, in some ham, right? I was supposed to fight? No, oh, like Bo Nickel. Yeah, I was yeah, like, I'm yeah. not supposed to fight yeah, Bo yeah. Nickel. I don't <laughs> want them problems. Uh, yeah, he got injured, mm. and then they pushed him. He's supposed to, f I don't, uh, can't be too bad, because I heard he's supposed to fight in December. I think he's, they pushed to the beginning of the year. But he's a guy, like, uh, it always takes a lot for me to, be, like, really put stock in, especially I don't have a lot of fights. And you look at the, like, just his foundation already with that elite wrestling background. <laughs> And then the way he's been trained at ATT, and then like guys like Maz Vidal, like everybody I know, like the the gym stories I hear about him, like he's you should freak. see his jujitsu dude. Really, I'm just and like he's only me. like technically he's only a blue belt, mm -hmm. but you saw that he did like inverted triangle, like yeah. the, his, his like his transition when he won that fight. When he came on here, he was on food truck. I'm like, who the fuck is only giving you a blue belt, dude? Yeah, right. You need to talk to your coach. Is that transition, dude? That ain't blue belt. No, I don't know no. what gym you're training that. Dude, I mean he's a, he's. One of the best wrestlers ever come out of D Division One, you know. Savage, what I mean? like, yeah, he, he's going to be a freak. Savage, he's funny because I was like, man, there's like this surge of Russian Dagestanians like coming. I was like, aren't you like, you know, you you've called out Hamzat, like you want to fight him in your first fight in UFC, which is like, man, it's a crazy, but right, that's the guy, that's the type of, that's the mentality you need, though, right? I mean, you fought Tyson Griffin, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're yeah, like, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Bo's gonna, Nichols gonna be like, holy shit, Frank said that's crazy, but yeah. you fought Tyson Griffin, right, which is right, nuts, and right. you got a sinus infection, right? Yeah, yeah. So for him, it's like we called out Hamzat, and when you think about it, you're like, yeah, like, you okay? Yeah, I mean, listen, like, I don't love it from at first because. And I, w I was, um, we had Laura Sanker on, who's, you know, the kind of the face of uh, yeah. Anyway Contender Series. And I was talking about Bo Nickel. I go, if I'm Bo Nickel's manager, if, if I'm the UFC, like, obviously the Bo Nickel train is coming. So he had, I think, one or two, he had one fight on Fight Pass. Mm. It's the most watched thing that year on Fight Pass. Wow. Like, there's a demand for wow. him. Wow, yeah. So they put him on Contender Series after that, right? And he's starching dudes. Yeah. Starching dudes. And my whole thing with that is, like, is he a top 15 guy, middleweight in the world? Absolutely. But, it, and you know this better than anyone, you know, when we talk about a marathon, your 15 year marathon. For me with Bo, it's like, hey man, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So yeah, can you beat Hamza? Maybe, mm -hmm. you'll be a slight underdog. Mm -hmm. You probably shouldn't win that fight, but damn, I'd probably bet on you, dude. You yeah. could, I could see you pulling that off. But then what? Then, what? then yeah, you don't then have you the gotta, experience. Yeah, yeah. You, then you're fighting the Izzy's of the world. You're, you know, you're fighting these monsters and, just take it slow and earn your money and get paid, yeah. you know? So it's yeah. like, so I was like, well, just keep finding contender series to give experience until they launch you, right. you know, into the big boy show and just be the champion. Like, if I'm Dana White contender series, I make Bo Nickel the face of it, make him the champion. He's this dominant champion. It would suck for the guys who have to fight him because clearly they're not going to get a no. chance, right. but just make him the face of it. And Laura Sanko, was, she was great about it. She goes, Ren, go f through 15 to Six, who's gonna beat him? I know. And I was like, you gotta get point. That is you tough, get point. Right. She's like, so what, 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 if he wants, he wants to go, you know? Yeah, he wants to, yeah. 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 He's, he's, he's a winner. He's a winner. He's a winner. Yeah. He's the only guy, too, where we never book somebody on food truck. If, so if they fight on Saturday, we never book them for the following week, just because you never know what's never gonna happen. Right. Like Anthony Smith, God bless me, one of my favorites. He's one of the best analysts, too, amazing fighter. We booked him before he fought uh, Magomed, who mm -hmm. fights, you know, Sid. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, his, like, ankle broke. So he's like, dude, I, I apologize. He was great about it. Yeah. He's like, I have to have surgery. I'm not going to make him. We push it. I'm like, don't worry about it. Right. So told the team, no more booking fighters yes. who are fighting that weekend. Because even if they win, it might be a problem. Then they go, hey, uh, Bo Nichols' team reached out. They want to have him on. I go, okay, book him. Yeah, he's yeah, one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah, yeah. They go, he fights Saturday. go, cool, book him. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What do you mean? I'm like, Book him. <laughs> I, w I guarantee he wins He'll be and doesn't get touched. Yeah, yeah. He's the one guy we can book. <laughs> he's the one guy we can book, you know? Like, I'm yeah. not booking you, you know, back in the day when you're fighting, you know, Greg Maynard. Yeah, yeah, right, you know, it's right, like, right. Yeah. Even if Frankie wins, yeah. it's going to be, <laughs> gonna be a, a war. Banged up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little yeah, banged yeah. up. <laughs> but, yeah, the game's just changed, man. I think a lot of these fighters have you to thank for it, you know? You're, you're a legend of the game, man. I know it has, it has to be weird getting compliments. Like, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm like a... Uh, yeah, you're not good with compliments. I'm not good with that, Ted. Yeah, because you know? you're not a narcissist. Yeah, yeah, If yeah, you were yeah. like, yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Tell me, tell me. Donald Trump and me. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Keep going. Um, you won gold jacket. No, but um, yeah, I think the guys have a lot to... You kind of paved the way for a lot of guys, and it must feel pretty good to look back on the career. I'm sure your family's proud of you. 
you're the first guest ever on Food Truck Diaries, yeah, man. Well, Here we are now, back. and I've, I've wanted you on for quite some time now. For every fighter, uh, my boys at Suplex in Philly, I'm a sneakerhead. So okay. it's, my, it's my gift to you for doing All the show. Right. Right. It's not just about the cold barbecue sandwiches <laughs> that you had no choice in. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we just don't give you cold food. I always give uh, the guests some oh, sneakers sweet. from Suplex in Philly. Philly's not too far from me, so no, no, they'll take not. care if you go in store too. But um, of course, these are your size, but I can't give a walking legend anything but some Jordans. Ah, oh, some Jays. They're like, oh, what about sure. some Yeezys? I went, let's lay oh, yeah, low let's on that for a while. Still have the Yeezys why don't we, for a minute. Hey, Suplex, why don't we chill out on the Yeezys <laughs> for a while, right? So, Frankie, how dare you? So I was like, dude, you got to have some. I, not only do I need some Jordans, but I need some of the classic ones. They go, which ones are your favorites? I said, the one, fours, and fives. Mm. So here's some fours for you, my oh, man. Wow. And this says, Mr. Edgar, huge longtime fans here at Suplex. Please wear and enjoy these Jordan 4s. Uh, we're not far from Jersey either, right on the South Street in Philly. Stop in whenever. We got you. Thanks for everything. Very cool. So these Very are for cool. you, my man. Oh, wow, I need a fire. Yeah, Super some, dope. Some legendary sneakers uh, for a yeah. legend. Sweet, man. Thank you, bro. This what do you got now? Some Steve Madden's? No, I got some. Aldo's, bro. Okay. Nice well, we're getting, nice we're getting older. We're getting older, dog. Cheap. But you got nice those fly kicks now, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, Some legend you. kicks thank for you. a legend, brother. You're I the best. I appreciate it, man. This is a great time. Frankie Egg, everybody. If you're into thick boys, <laughs> like, subscribe, comment, and God bless America. Well, that's not my big one. Just kidding. <laughs>